The carrying system can be used to transport an oxygen cylinder together with the device. This enables the device to be operated directly at the patient's location, independent of a central gas supply. To change the oxygen cylinder, loosen the screw cap on the device. Open the closure of the device by lifting both handles to the top and release them. Now lift the upper part of the closures upwards and pull them off. Open the device. Take out the oxygen cylinder and remove the pressure reducer. Connect the pressure reducer to the new oxygen cylinder or use an oxygen cylinder with an integrated pressure reducer. Place the cylinder in the well of the base plate and position the oxygen cylinder so that the pressure reducer is on the side of the bar and the cylinder body is resting on all four rubber feet. Connect the oxygen compressed gas hose to the ventilator. Rotate the cylinder so that the pressure reducer and the hose do not protrude beyond the bar. Attach and fasten both closures until they engage audibly. Rotate the cylinder valve slowly and open it fully. To attach the accessory bag, push the outside openings of the buttons onto the pins on the side of the device. To remove the bag, pull on the buttons fastened inside the accessories bag. Internal power is provided by means of a removable, rechargeable battery. Remove the battery compartment cover. Insert the battery vertically in the battery compartment with the contacts facing downward until the locking lever on the carrying handle side engages. Fit the battery compartment cover and press it until it engages audibly. To remove the battery, press the locking lever on the carrying handle side and lift out the battery vertically using the strap. The DC-DC converter can be used to connect the device to onboard power supply, such as in ambulances. It can be used with 12, 24 or 28 voltages. Plug the small connector into the device's DC socket and the large connector of the DC-DC converter into the onboard power supply. Using a power supply unit, connect the DC connector to the device's DC socket and insert the power plug into the power socket. Check if the device is connected correctly to the external power source. The LED next to the battery status indicator lights up green when the battery is charged. When it is charging, the LED flashes green. The LED lights up yellow if the battery is faulty or no battery is inserted. Connect the oxygen compressed gas hose to the standard port on the device. Connect the gas probe to the oxygen terminal unit until it locks in place and the oxygen supply is assured. To maintain continuous oxygen supply when switching from the built-in oxygen cylinder supply to central gas supply, the device can additionally be connected to a central gas supply system via the quick coupling port while the cylinder supply is active. Connect the gas probe of the oxygen compressed gas hose to the oxygen terminal unit. Connect the oxygen compressed gas hose to the device's quick coupling port until it locks in place and the oxygen supply is assured. Slowly close the valve of the built-in oxygen cylinder. Place the diaphragm in the breathing valve housing. Make sure that it is fitted correctly. Mount the cover and turn it about 60 degrees clockwise until it engages. Push the flow sensor onto the breathing valve. To do so, align the flow sensor on the breathing valve using the grooves in the flow sensor. Push the elbow onto the flow sensor. Connect the breathing hose to the breathing valve and connect the flow measuring lines to the ports of the flow sensor. When connecting the flow measuring lines, pay attention to the differing diameters of the hoses and connectors and connect them to the correct connector. Connect the flow measuring lines to the Oxilog VE300. 
Correct alignment is indicated by a groove on the connector, which must point away from the breathing hose. Connect the breathing hose to the device's gas outlet. A bacterial filter, HME or catheter mount is connected directly to the patient port of the breathing circuit. When using an HME, the measured flow may deviate from the actual expiratory flow because temperature and humidity of the breathing gas are reduced. The flow and volume measurements can be adjusted for use with an HME. To set the HME correction, touch the HME button, set the desired value, on or off, and confirm the setting with the rotary knob. Disconnect the elbow from the flow sensor or pressure sensor. Connect the CO2 cuvette to the flow sensor or pressure sensor so that the windows point to the side. Attach the elbow to the CO2 cuvette. Push the CO2 sensor onto the CO2 cuvette with the cable toward the device. Connect the CO2 sensor to the port on the device. Alternatively, connect the CO2 cuvette directly to the patient port of the elbow without disconnecting the elbow from the flow sensor.